In this video, we're going to go over foam rolling techniques that can help you feel so much better, recover quicker, and also hit the right spots that you may be missing. We're going to cover quads, calves, upper back, glutes. I think that's about all of it. Let's pop into it. Your quads are such an important muscle for mountain bikers, cyclists in general, because they're a primary mover of your pedal. And so that means that they get hit a lot as you ride, especially if you're riding more steep elevation and also if you're riding more technical descents. This area tends to get overlooked when it comes to the sides and the inner part of your quads and also the top most part of your quads. Our quad has four muscles. That's why it's called the quadricep. One of them comes up and crosses the hip. That's the rectus femoris. This muscle in particular causes a lot of hip tightness in cyclists and mountain bikers in general. And it needs to get foam rolled. You need to give it some love. And so as you're doing your foam rolling, make sure that you roll that foam roller or roll yourself down. And so you hit the uppermost part of your thigh. This top central front part of your thigh is where your rectus femoris comes in and where it's the most prominent part of your thigh. You also want to hit the innermost part of your thigh and the outermost part of your thigh. And so this requires you to actually kind of rotate on your foam roller and go up and down and rotate on your foam roller and go up and down. This may require that you do one side comparably to both sides. If you find that foam rolling is so painful for you, then I would recommend you one, offloading a little bit and using your other leg to support and having not as much pressure pushing down or two, get a different foam roller. Foam rollers come in a lot of different densities and we tend as athletes, we tend to choose more and harder, more dense is better. It's not necessarily the case, especially if you're new to foam rolling or have very tight muscles. That's whenever you want a this that's when you want a least dense or less dense type foam roller. The white is typically the most least dense of the foam rollers, and that's the one I use the most. Now, this foam roller may not last you for ages because as you use it, it will squish and move and change shape on you, and you may have to buy another one. That's the downfall of it, is that it's not going to last forever in your entire lifetime. Granted, I've had mine for years. As you do this going back and forth, do it for about a minute or so total for each leg, and so you're going to be moving through these different areas. If you do it for too long, and put too much pressure and sustain it on one area, it will make you more sore as a whole and not help with your recovery. Let's go into your calves next. So as we go into your calf, you can use the foam roller if you want, and or you can use a tennis ball if you'd like. I'm gonna show you here with a foam roller. So as we look at your calf, we have two different main muscles here. We have your gastrox, which are kind of your two heads at the top part, the top part of your calf, and we have your soleus, which kind of extends in the more the middle, the central part of your calf, but it's more lower in it. These two combine to help you with pushing your foot down and also with knee flexion, bending your knee. These areas, you need to hit them a little bit differently. And so as you're focused on the, the top most part next to your knee, we want to hit one side and then the other side. So an outer and an inner here. As we look more down towards your ankle, then we want to hit more centrally in this. We want to hit more centrally in your soleus here. And you want to do both of these as your foam roll in your calf. Same thing goes one minute or so total. You can do one to three minutes if you want, but start with one minute, roll up and down. If you start to feel any numbness or tingling in your actual foot, then that means that you're, that you're resting on a nerve. Pop off of it, no harm, no foul. Don't sustain pressure on that if you start to feel that tingliness because you think it, you've hit a good spot, quote unquote. Doing this, you can also sometimes pump your ankle back and forth or even just hold your foot up if you want a little bit more pressure into it. Now, as we get into your glutes here, this is an area that most people tend to foam roll if you're going to foam roll, but we tend to sit on it more so. And you're like, well, that's where my glute is, Liz. It's my butt. True, yes, but your glute also extends up and attaches to the topmost part of your pelvis. We miss this topmost part of our pelvis 
or the uppermost parts of your glutes so much when it comes to it. This uppermost part also has the biggest play and biggest factor on your low back and the function of your actual glutes. It's a big part of your glute max sits up there and also your glute med sits up close to that as well. And so if you miss your uppermost parts of your glutes when you're rolling, then you're missing a big part of your actual glute here. And so as you're rolling, you're gonna put your hands back and you'll rest backwards and so you can get that uppermost top part of that glute of your butt and you'll roll out there as well. Now again, if you wanna add a little bit more oomph to it, then we put things on stretch and so you can cross one leg over top of the other and that gives you a little bit more stretch on that muscle, which gets you a little bit more pressure from the foam roller. One minute or so total each side, flipping sides, and then you move on to the next muscle. So as you see, it's not a ton of time that we're taking to foam roll, but this little bit of intention goes so far when it comes to your actual mobility, how you feel recovered wise, and just your overall joint happiness. Because if you have tight muscles, you have immobility, then you're not gonna be able to function. You're not actually gonna be able to produce the strength and power that you want, and it's gonna cause more pain in certain areas, like low back tension. One of the last areas that we're gonna go over is your upper back. Now, as we have talked earlier, we've been more on muscles here. Your foam roller can also help you with your joints in certain areas and certain aspects. The upper back is gonna help you with your spine joints as they stack one on top of the other, your thoracic spine. This is an area that's typically super supported, super stable, and it needs more mobility, especially for us as bikers because we're typically in a more slouched posture and we kind of get stuck there with the rest of the things that we do in daily life. We need to get some mobility up there to help us move, help us rotate. It'll help you with your cornering if you have better here, and it will help with your neck and shoulder soreness if you get any of that on the bike or off the bike. What you're going to do is you're going to lay on it, and you're going to roll it up and back, down your back. And what we want to make sure we do is we want to get our shoulder blades out of the way. If we hold our arms out to the side, our elbows out to the side, then basically what we're doing is we're planting in our shoulder blades next to our spine, and that's just making us roll on our shoulder blades. It may feel great. You can do this as well, but it's not hitting the area that we really want to target. We want to bring those elbows in, still support your head, and get our shoulder blades out of the way. So now we roll up and down on our ribs and also on our spine. Rolling up and down just on that part. Don't roll down to your low back. Your low back isn't sorted and suited for you to have that much pressure directly onto it. If you want to roll onto that, you can do it on the wall or you can use a tennis ball to hit certain areas instead of actually putting pressure directly onto your spine. It doesn't like it for your low back. It needs stability. Your upper back thoracic spine needs mobility in this. As you're doing this, remember to breathe. A lot of people tend to hold their breath. That keeps their rib cage nice and stable, but we want it to move with us. And so breathe as you're doing this, as you roll up and back. If you don't like your hands on your head, you can always cross your hands across your chest. That also gets your shoulder blades out of the way. Or you can do what I sometimes do is a single arm across the chest and one arm supporting my head, and then I flip-flop here. I don't know why, it just works and it seems more comfortable and cozy for me. So it might also for you. That wraps up our kind of foam roller view of these main areas that will, it'll help you so much if you put time into these areas. I think it was like five minutes total, you're gonna be doing it. So it's not that much to add in to a nightly routine or even something you do in front of the TV. I hope that you put these to work. I hope that you rewatch this video as I'm going through these different things that you need to be doing and listening to and changing, breathing, and make it happen to support yourself and help you recover so much better and just feel better as a whole.